Uh, so, hi, I'm Jim Ferenzi. I'm here with uh, Ben Trent to talk to you about the latest breakthrough in vector search for Elasticsearch and Lucy. So, today we're going to dig into the Elasticsearch as a vector database. Just a little bit of history Elasticsearch started as a search engine and a data store, primarily used for text search and analytics on semi structured and unstructured data. So, that's the uh, data structure that, we're, that we were using until now. Uh, we call it sparse vector, uh, but it's quite recent. Um, and with the uh, advancement in machine learning, uh, the increasing need to enhance mixed data type, uh, we introduced, uh, not so recently, but we introduced the, what we call dense vector. So dense vector here, it's the, uh, instead of having uh, the sparse vector, which means that you have uh, the operation from text that is translated into keywords, and uh, for each keyword, you have an inverted list that gives you uh, the, where the documents, uh, so if the documents contains the keyword or not. For dense vector, the operation is completely different. You start from a text, you translate the text into a certain number of dimensions, which are floating points, and that's the, data, that's the uh, structure that you need to search on. Today, we will explore so, some of the most recent announcements that we've implemented in that domain, so we will focus on the, uh, on the uh, uh, dance vector side. But of course, uh, we will also show that uh, the mixing of sparse vector and dense vector is one of the main capabilities of Elasticsearch. <coughs> so, to make Elasticsearch is a vector database, it all starts with the new capability, and like every new capability in Elasticsearch and by extension in Lucene, the library that we use for search, it all starts with a data structure. The data structure that we use and that we introduce is called uh, Hierarchical Navigable Small World Graph. It's an extension of the navigable small world graph, the main thing that you can uh, retain from this, uh, 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 from, this from this chart, is from this diagram, is really the fact that the hierarchical aspect uh, of the data structure makes the uh, searching of the uh, nearest neighbor much more efficient. This is the state-of-the-art data structure that is used for uh, efficient nearest neighbor search, and this is the uh, data structure that we actively participated in uh, integrated into Lucene. Ben and I are uh, commit Lucene committer and PMC of uh, Lucene, and so uh, as many of the engineers in Elasticsearch, the, we start by adding the capability in Elasticsearch, and of course, the next step is to make it accessible in Elasticsearch, just like any other indexing data structure that we support. Over the recent years, we've been deeply committed to the seamless integration of this new data structure into our system, treating it as a fundamental data structure like any other. We introduced the native filtering capabilities, leveraging the rich filter uh, capabilities of the Elasticsearch DSL, so the Elasticsearch uh, language uh, that we use for querying. Additionally, and to make the uh, Elasticsearch platform an end-to-end -end semantic search platform, we integrated the capability to uh, create the embedding directly inside the platform. So instead of uh, searching di directly with your vectors, you can search your text, the translation from this text to, uh, an, uh, to a dance vector is made through a model, an open source model or a private model that we're developing internally at Elastic, and uh, the search is done uh, as the last step. The other capabilities that we're adding is really about making sure that the hybrid search, the way we call it, uh, is completely uh, integrated and easy to use inside Elasticsearch, which means that you can mix the searching of your dense vector and your sparse vector using very simple abstraction. Here I'm just showing how you can rescore using the dots vector, so you could have a BM25 query that is getting some uh, uh, relevant documents, and you can use here a simple script to rescore your document, so it's just to show that we don't always use the HNSW, you can also use uh, the dance vector as a rescoring uh, 
uh, step after your search. So that was just a glimpse of what we do, but now that we have a grasp of the fundamental of our vector search capability in Lucene, in Elasticsearch and Lucene, sorry, I will, pass the, I will uh, leave the stage to Ben. We will delve into the latest announcement in this domain and provide a glimpse of our upcoming development in the near future. Thank you, Jim. Uh, he said he'd leave me 10 minutes, and I have less than that. So let's see how fast we can go through this. So I'm going to talk about some of the recent advancements and some of the things we're working on now. Uh, one, of the, one thing that's available today is SIMD operations inside of Vector Search. So SIMD just means single instruction, multiple data. This means you can do one arithmetic or specialized linear algebra calculation over multiple dimensions of data in a single CPU cycle. It's a lot of words. It just means it go faster. Uh, so this is important for vector search, particularly because we do a lot of repetitive calculations, especially for dot product. Dot product takes a lot of floating point operations and multiplies floating points together and sums them together. Being able to do that four and 16 times faster is a significant improvement for indexing and searching vectors. So here's an example of a traditional kind of vector or a floating point addition operation. You take two numbers and you add them together. If you were not using SIMD, you would be doing this, single operation per cycle. Uh, with SIMD, you get true parallelism inside of the CPU core, and then you can do as many as four, eight, or 16 operations at a given time. Um, what makes this exceptionally powerful is that it's not just for floating point, but you can do this for byte and integer and short values, and the various lengths of your data end up meaning you can do more or less operations at the same time. Uh, micro benchmarks show that this is four to 16 times faster. In Elasticsearch, it's over two times faster depending on your CPU architecture. Uh, and we natively introduced this to Lucene so that it is tightly integrated in our stack and you get it just out of the box. Uh, something else that we have today is uh, multi-threaded search over segments. So Elasticsearch has always been composed as more than one shard per index. It's an individual Lucene shard over multiple nodes. And we've always been able to search those in parallel. Uh, every shard has more than one Lucene segment. Segments are read-only structures inside of Lucene, and we have more than one of those. And then every segment has its own HNSW graph. Before we would have to take each individual segment and we would read it one at a time. And so your runtime scales linearly with how many segments you have. Uh, we have recently introduced the ability to run this in parallel. And so we take better advantage of how many CPUs you have on your server and we can do massive parallelism to reduce latency over multiple segments. Now to level set to introduce the next thing we're working on is I want to talk about vector memory byte requirements. Typically, per dimension inside of a vector, you end up having about 4 billion options inside of a floating point number, which is way too many. Uh, dense embedding models don't use all that information. They store this very inefficiently, but that's just how it is. So you end up getting this full fidelity, but once you're talking about 300, 700, 1500, 2000 dimensions, you don't need that amount of fidelity per dimension. So you can reduce that and have really good costs to just int 8, and you can reduce it even farther to half bytes, which would be int 4, which is surprising because that only means you get 64 numbers per dimension, but because of how many dimensions exist in these larger vector models, it ends up working out all right. So this is something that we're working on right now in Lucene. So as I said before, typically models embed in float 32, and for a given vector, let's say, Let's say you have E5 small, which has been built by Microsoft and is a very good model. It embeds 386 dimensions, and so that's 1.5 kilobytes per vector, which doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're talking about HNSW and needing to hold these in memory, that's only about 5 million vectors for 8 gigs of RAM. If you have byte quantization, you end up being able to increase by 4x the amount of bytes you can hold in memory. So we're building this right now in Lucene. And it's very simple algebra to take the floating point values and transform them into byte values. Uh, it's like high school level algebra. Do you all remember FOIL, first, inner, outer, last? Anybody remember that? Uh, that's exactly what this is and some very simple statistics. Uh, so what you end up getting is a four times reduction in space. Search ends up being uh, just as accurate because of higher dimensionality. 
and it ends up coming out in the wash statistically, you end up about getting two times faster search because of SIMD, and now you can actually do more dimensions, uh, more calculations at a single time for CPU cycle. And because of how Lucene is architectured, it ends up, being, it ends up fitting perfectly in Lucene's read-only segment architecture. This means that as, you're, as you get more data, we have typical merge points perfectly for segments for us to ensure that your recall doesn't drop if your data shifts. I don't know if anybody else that really does that, like we can. Uh, for hybrid search, we have had this for a long time. Um, we have, you can use filter results via geo, numerical, text, and any combination of all these for vector and sparse search. And you can combine vector and sparse search in various ways. Uh, one is RF, which is a new capability. This is, provides very good uh, simple, no fine-tuning results. You just give us the results and we'll combine them together and you end up getting the best of both worlds for the result sets. Uh, it is very simple to think about and how it combines sparse and dense retrieval and it provides a good out-of-the-box experience for your users. But that's not all that we end up having and all that we can provide as far as combining sparse and dense models together. You end up having linear boosting and combining of your features. This is something that we've had for a long time, and you can tightly control and ho how you boost each individual query, and you can cater this for your, for your users and your individual needs, and you can learn over time what's the correct boosting for users and end up boosting based on geolocation and all this information for users so they get the most relevant results for them. And this is for both dense and sparse retrieval. Uh, one other thing that we've been working on that is coming out soon is Maximum Inner Product. Uh, Maximum Inner Product is a simple kind of calculation where the magnitude of the vector ends up adjusting the score. So for cosine similarity, uh, uh, it is a simple Euclidean space calculation, but for maximum or product, it is non-Euclidean. This effectively means that a vector is no longer closest to itself, and distance isn't so simple to think about as a human. But models handle this exceptionally well, and so does HNSW. So you can see in this graph between A and B, A is not as close as, not perfectly, not, is closer to B than it is to itself because of the magnitude difference. But HNSW and Lucene handle this perfectly well. Uh, if you want to get to the nitty gritty, there's an open source uh, GitHub issue that uh, has hundreds and hundreds of comments of all of our research between us and other Lucene committers to make sure that this works, and it does. And so this, will, this is in Lucene now, and it'll be in Elasticsearch soon. And one other thing that we've added recently in Lucene, and it will be in Elasticsearch soon, is passage vectors. Uh, all embedding models have token input limits. This requires you to chunk long passages into vectors. And this comes up, okay, so how do we end up handling our metadata? Do we copy it for all of our passage vectors and index them all individually? That can be wasteful. Why would we want to do that? I'm always going to filter over the same thing. How am I going to combine my sparse passage search with my dense vectors, because now BM25 scores change depending on how many documents you have or how big your documents are. Um, you also want to have your nearest passages over the nearest documents. You just don't want the closest passage, you want the closest document. And so Lucene has passage vector support and, it's the, and that's what we recently added. It effectively works like this. It allows you, it's built on Lucene primitives and it allows you to uh, diversify the document score based on its nearest passage as we're searching the HNSW graph. It fits natively in Lucene with very little overhead, and we didn't have to make any deep structural changes, and it just sort of worked. I kind of geeked out a little bit when I first tested this, and it worked out of the box, and I was kind of blown away. I was very excited. Um, but it allows you to filter easily over the metadata and combine over the top-level sparse searching. Uh, I'm running out of time. Oh, this is a very quick slide. Here's a bunch of stuff that I didn't touch on, and apparently I need to add adding like a golden retriever query sometime later that Shai just announced today. So uh, just picture that line in here with this slide. Um, so optimizations for sparse vector and ELSER. 
We have multiple optimizations in Lucene that have been introduced that are coming to Elasticsearch soon. Uh, Elsevier v2 and hardware acceleration of infrastructure. Uh, making inference a first-class citizen in the stack. Uh, Shai talked about that earlier. Uh, and super like many, many simplifications inside of vector search and indexing and user experience. Uh, I hope that this high overview created some questions. And I am eager to talk to each one of you. And uh, thank you.